any work is committed, I just want to mention this so that people don't miss out on it. Before any work is committed, we come out, take a look at the existing condition, and then we issue, a, when we get the information on what's proposed, we issue a pre-approval. And that says, okay, you're going to be pre-approved, so you get it in writing how much you're going to get. So you're pre-approved for, for $5,000 in rebates, and you can go ahead with the program, I mean, you know, and the installation. So when you're finished, what we do is we come back and say, oh, yeah, we did all what we said, and then what we do is submit that for payment. So it's not, it's not a big, onerous process, but what we have is a one-page application. We need the, uh, the information, the supporting documentation of what you're putting in, whether it's, you know, a lighting or HVAC or anything. That's all. And we use these groups, these kind of like objective areas. Uh, the Consortium for Energy Efficiency is for fluorescent lighting, Energy Star, uh, and Design Lights for LEDs. All right? So that's kind of what we use to qualify the technology that's given to us. So if you have these lighting, okay, we have to make sure that it's UL, and we have to make sure that it's either DLC or Energy Star or CEE approved. That's all. We see it on the list, we see it used for the right uh, situation, and we're good to go. All right? That kind of gives you a sense for what that. And then um, what we do is we look at the energy assessments. I won't you know, say too long on this, but what we'll do is we'll give some guidance uh, on what the building, you know, what options you have, what opportunities you may have in a building. Like I said, it's not a detailed audit, um, but it is a good guide to at least say, oh, okay, I, I qualify here. I can, I can think about this. I can think about that. And then maybe the next step would be to try to get some bids on and, and get some other information. So you're, you're a good first guy to bring in. Yeah, I think so. And a lot of times, you know, depending on the building and building type, we try to we try to help to uh, take a look at it and, and help Free, the customer right? through. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, again, we also offer technical assistance, and the technical assistance is this is a little further. That if you did want to get into a detailed study, the engineering study in the middle. What we do is we offer pretty good incentives to help, and Jimmy was saying that, he does that a lot, to help with studies for customers. These are a lot more detailed than engineering. What we do is we partner up, essentially, and offer some incentives to help <coughs> defer the cost of the study and help make it easier to go ahead and move ahead with the, uh, you know, whatever's proposed in that study. So we want to, I want to make that clear that we do offer some incentives for that, so keep that in mind. So if you do want to go to the next step, that's something to consider. And uh, the Energy Star label buildings and lead is probably not uh, something that everybody's going to be jumping up and down for here, but nevertheless, I wanted to at least let everybody know that we <coughs> have that in the program parameters and on the list, so to speak. And this, again, is a small business type program that's for only load constrained areas and what LIPA had done a few years ago was actually bid out a contract for a, uh, a contractor to sell, in this case it's going to be high, high efficiency fluorescent lighting and screw in LEDs only, not the 2 by 4s that I mentioned earlier. Uh, but what they'll do is in load constrained areas if a customer wanted a one stop shop uh, this was uh, something that was available and we wanted to make available to certain customers, all right? So it's in the load constrained areas which are varied, so it's not like I can just say, oh, it's right here or this town or that town because it's done by circuit and it's kind of complicated, so I won't spend a lot of time on it. But the point is that it does have its place and it is, uh, has been a pretty successful program in terms of helping customers in those areas, all right? And uh, what I also wanted to kind of end up with here, believe it or not, is Utility 2.0. Has anybody heard of Utility 2.0 at all? In a couple? All right. This is uh, basically the new frontier, essentially, in a lot of ways. And what it is, is, is uh, guidance from the state, basically uh, trying to reform, as they say, it, reforming the energy vision, REV, reforming that energy vision. What does that mean? It means taking, taking a look at how utilities deliver services and electricity and say is there obviously better ways to, to kind of go about this. And one of the things they're thinking about is maybe we do a, a you know, kind of take a look at some decentralized uh, power options, <coughs> little microgrids. That, what does that mean? That means things like battery storage down the road. It means like uh, solar PV and using that to power up 
some areas and some buildings or businesses and, and homes and whatnot. It also means things like uh, combined heat and power, cogen, back in the mix that way. Take a look at how, you know, really at the facility, how we can better utilize the grid. And it also helps with distribution, and it also helps with some kind of, you know, basically, essentially a safety, you know, look. So there's a lot of elements to it, but what I wanted to point out was that this is over and above the mainstay $90 million program that, I, that we know and love that I've been talking about a little bit today. This is over and above. That $215 million in the bottom right is now $345. That 215 has been revised. This is going to uh, light the board on December 17th. This is a 2015 to 2018 starting point program. In 2015, you'll start to see some of it come out. What is it? You have things like targeted solar PV expansion. A lot of it in residential. We're also going to look at uh, thermostat modernization, utilizing that uh, through Wi-Fi, a new type of Wi-Fi systems. We talk about conservation programs strictly for hospitals. It's like, you know, 30 mil, so, if they want to put in. So that is going to be something that hospitals will be looking at. Um, there's, there's also certain programs, as I mentioned, combined heat power, but there's also, we have some low constrained areas out east, <clears throat> and we have some like in the Rockaway Peninsula, and what we want to do is target those areas as a starting point with some enhanced programs to help reduce the load there so we can offset the distribution and transmission costs to bring in more power there. So, so, so it's not like they have outages every minute, but there's <coughs> constraints that we need to address. So, so these are programs that yeah. are being suggested Correct. To, yeah. to be approved by the board for the future r &D And the state, research. correct. And this and is going the through the process well. now. And right. uh, Charlie, you and John mm -hmm. and Jimmy, you guys, uh, are familiar with this whole? Uh, oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Got, any, got any thoughts? And yeah. Uh, uh, my my well, only thought uh, actually, is actually either question. Go ahead. My, <laughs> my only thought is really education. Yeah. Continue to get the word out. As Mike said earlier, yeah. I mean we're, you, you know, we're all inundated by this green tsunami that's been upon us, right? And, right. And uh, you know uh, decisions and you know I, I sit with clients. They got 20 different proposals for 20 different light bulbs. Half the time I'm scratching my head and I'm like, you know, how do you own this $20 million building and you're going to put 20 different proposals, at least put three of them in front of me. You have to make some right. sort of a choice. Yeah, right. So, uh, but it's hard. It, yeah, very, very hard. Yeah, it's, it, you know, because everyone, there's, you know, it's, it's just very, it's confusing. It's very overwhelming. It really is. It's, very it's almost like they really need to start with, you know, their scope of work, obviously, and then everybody bids against that because what happens is on those, in those situations, when you do get, Five, ten, twenty different types of thoughts and proposals. You're getting those thoughts from the contractor or engineering company, whomever is bidding, right? So they're just coming in with. They their just own want money. to sell their yeah. product. They don't so, care, right? Well, you know, they, so the idea is that if you can get some kind of a common base scope of work, so that everybody at least is bidding on that, you know, that's probably the best way to go. But unfortunately, you do get a lot of that. You get a lot of just different ideas coming in. The ideas turn into proposals, and then it's like total confusion and nobody acts, <laughs> you know, because there's no way to start, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. What about demand response systems? Is yeah. that in there somewhere? Yeah. Or? Demand response is going to be in the, it's in the um, advanced metering okay. uh, the, and, and also even in this, the thermostat piece, to, at least the small, medium businesses as well, that would be a piece of that. But the advanced metering, there's going to be uh, AMI, advanced metering initiative essentially, is going to be smart meters that are put on smart electric meters, that is, really, are going to be put on for all rate 285, which is on multiple rate larger customers like this. And what they're going to have are these new meters that's going to give them the ability, meaning the customer, as well as us, but the customer, the ability to interact with that meter, meaning the loads, and get an understanding of what the building is doing on a minute by minute, hourly, whatever you want, it basis. I mean, that's... You know, look, that's been commonplace in a lot of control systems and whatnot, but when you look at it at the electric meter, that's something new and different. We've been doing this a little bit now for the last couple of years on a more pilot-type program, so it's been limited. 
and we've been looking at residential accounts and, and business accounts as well and trying to uh, get an understanding of how they work, um, how best the customer should use them or could use them, that kind of thing. And now we're expanding it out and we're going to go with the multiple rate periods because customers have just that, multiple rates with different electric costs per rate, off peak, on peak, medium, etc. You know what I mean? So, so there's different costs associated with that usage. If customers can move load, if customers can shed load, if customers can understand where their costs are at least, then they can at least try to do something about it if possible. If the business commitments dictate that they can't move anything or do anything, okay. You know, that's not great news, but it happens. You know, obviously the business is the priority. Well, you should be efficient you know? if that's the case. Yeah, and you, you can at least be efficient. And when you are efficient and you do reduce load, you can at least see those results. You know, and you'll be able to calculate what the savings are. Just in my example earlier, you'll be able to see exactly, hey, I'm getting a three-year payback. I'm getting a one-year payback. I'm getting an immediate, you know, return. Whatever it might be, you'll see that. So the idea of this and idea of, the idea of a lot of this is actually trying to put more control and information in the customer's hands so that they could better, you know, kind of utilize the energy. I mean, that's the idea. So, it almost seems like yeah. the advanced metering is almost your first step. I mean, I it's it, ingenious. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Because you, you, you want to say what you don't measure. Yeah, you right. want to know what's that's going what on in the building, right. not that's only we're talking when about you're there, when right. you're not there. <laughs> So what, right. so what can a company yeah. like mine get into, into something like that? Yeah, that, this is probably going to happen now. <laughs> yeah. No, but, but something like the, these programs, these programs, I put them up there and I saved them last because they don't have super definition around them just yet because they're new. But that doesn't mean it's years away. It means it's like, you know, half a year away. You know, this is, a lot of this will, will start coming out in 2015. And then I would say full bore more so towards the end of 15 into 16. Now, is that going to happen automatically? So, or is yeah, this will happen automatically. Happen? The rate 285, which I think you, I'm sure you are, yeah. we'll, we'll get that and you'll get communication from us about it. Oh, we, we, you know, we're going to upgrade your meter. You're now going to have the smart meter or AMI, however they call it. And you, you'll get notified, obviously, before we do anything because it's got to be coordinated. You know? Right. Well, now, so, now we're going to have the smart meter. Now I need, obviously, somehow to track what it is. And I, and I believe we're going to also help customers with that as well. Okay. So you're going to educate us on how they can utilize the data. Yep. So, so, so John Culbertson there is a yep. uh, considered expert on smart meters? A little bit. Lars Moore. So I have a question because we're, we're out there talking to clients. Right. We have to see the load. And uh, unfortunately, the West Coast is so far ahead of us yep. uh, in terms of smart meters. Yep. But all the companies I deal with in the battery world are from the West Coast mm -hmm. and have all that uh, information available to them. Uh, one of the things, seeing what's going on with, 2000, you know, with the web, uh, utility 2.0, mm -hmm. uh, so there's clients like that gentleman, I forgot his first name. Vinny, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't have his call out. Uh, like Vinny, who uh, need that today as opposed to waiting until the, uh, right. the, the you come around to it to be years right. before we know, you know that. Is there any kind of a, a way, you know, there are standard, uh, Schneider makes, uh, and if Lars was here, he knows them inside now, and they're ones that you're probably going to use. Is there any way that you could work with Vinny somewhere online that we place these in now, and it, it counts towards the uh, that, the, that this is going on, so we can start getting the data today. Because it's real good to put these in. Mm -hmm. It takes a year to get the profile to see the seasons right. that you need you in order to do right. everything. Yeah. So the more we wait, and we're going to wait because you're a big, huge company, uh, is, there any, is, is there any way that it can be... That's a, possible. And uh, like because we do, have, we do have a, a smart grid group, essentially, that's looking at what I'm talking about here, and um, those are the, those are the people that are obviously dealing with the pilot programs that I mentioned, etc. So, is it possible that we include somebody in that uh, situation? I, you know, I would say yes. I think that's very possible. I could, you know, leave a card, and and uh, we could, you know, I can obviously just check it out, make sure to see if that's available right, right now. Versus later, to have a, uh, you know. Well, I've, I'm. 
Okay. Chopping at the bit here because yeah. Leviton is a smart meter business. Yep. So we need to sell smart meters. <laughs> and, and, the, and the thing about installing the smart meter with or without yep. assistance from PSEG is that I, I guess you must be aware that if you exceed peak demand at a certain point in the day, you not only get billed for that day, but maybe the entire month or, or perhaps the entire quarter or a year or whatever. It bases your whole year. Yeah, it's your, your whole year. You're going to be paying the accelerated rate because you went over to peak for 15 minutes. Right. So if you put one of these meters in, you can actually watch in real time what your building is doing. And if you find out, you walk in every day and the guy turns on all your big machines all at the same time and it goes like that, you're going to see it right on your screen. And what you do is you step them. Turn right. one on, wait a little while until, until the inrush dies down, turn the next one on. And guess what? You just saved yourself ten thousand dollars. The cost of the meter is, uh, you know, how much? Up? Five percent of that. You know, five, you know, five thousand. thousand. And then installation. Uh, installation. So, you know, it's very inexpensive. So, so it still would be pretty. Easy. Well, it's a pretty quick return on it. Obviously, yeah. yeah. If you utilize it correctly, it really works out. So I'd like to work with you on it. And then you wouldn't. Uh, Mike and go to a client like this yeah. and see if we can make that a, something that we can go forward. Yeah, with. benchmark it. And Take everything right out of it, see if we can work it. Right. <laughs> we, we, can, we can see how to make that happen. Because I guess, I guess what we've uh, come up with over the last couple of meetings is, uh, you know, data is all important. It's the most important piece. Yeah, right. yeah it is. It really is. And yes. for a couple of grants, we have put uh, some, in, you know, a, a data uh, uh, meter in there and figure out how to deal with it. Yeah. And then we can call you guys with uh, you know, knowing what uh, we're right. going to do. Just, yeah. As an aside, then, I, don't, I, I had read, uh, you're familiar with your retro efficiency program, right? You had a deal with retro efficiency? But yes. So so here's what, what you can do, and this is what they're doing in the West Coast, just real quickly. They call it Green Button. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Green Button. So what's good that you have this information coming out of the uh, the meter? I have a meeting with them tomorrow, by the way. Super. <laughs> okay, so here's what happens. There's a button that you press after you sign up for, um, go on the web, your account, you go into PCAP Safe, and you end up hitting a button. And it gives you, I actually carry it around, a uh, recommendations of what you should do. It'll show your lighting load, it'll show your, your uh, plug loads, it'll show your HVAC load, and what you should do with all those hours. And you don't do it. You press the button. And they're doing that right now. Yep. Uh, they had the, the contract visit. So you don't have to buy anything. Uh, Easy, you could, you could. That's what these things do. I mean, it, it gives you a chance to look at what your your loads look like, uh, and really, I take some action. So, yeah. it's, it's all, I mean, sorry, could you go back to the slide for a second? Yeah, John asked for if some of us could give comments on what we think of 2.0. Mm -hmm. Just looking at the combined heat and power and the geothermal, yeah. these are tremendous technologies. Yeah. They substantially reduce your energy use. And these are the technologies that our federal tax system rewards. Yeah. Both of those will get 10% tax credits. Both of those will get five years yeah. accelerated depreciation. And both of those will qualify for $1.80 a square foot. Yeah. Yeah. So what's nice is they're honing in on the things where, where there's consistency with federal policy. What about with batteries? Uh, there's no incentives for batteries. Uh, they, they're, they're, the, the I mean, for batteries, is in, for batteries will be in the mix right now. Right. Right. That's, 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 that's going to help more for the, uh, like, it's in, it's in the South Fork East End initiative as one alternative. If it's so, to PV. Yeah. But the other thing with geothermal, too, I just want to mention uh, what we did is we actually got together with the industry and came up with a way of combining or looking at the codes, the installation codes, etc and making really kind of one set of codes for the industry, which wasn't there. So when different inspectors went out to different jobs, they would say either, I don't know this, or I don't know if this is right, or this is not. So it caused a lot of problems within the industry in terms of when they were trying to, you know, uh, install a unit and whatnot. But now, now, it's just been really kind of rectified where there's a uniform type code on it so that everybody's work, working on the same sheet of music. So now that you brought up codes, uh, mm -hmm. and you brought up the West Coast, yeah. uh -oh. um, are, you, are you familiar with California Title 24? Uh, a bit. Okay, so California I'm Title 24 is basically a, a draconian set of law of codes that are in place now for new building construction and, um, and major retrofit. And basically you can't put anything in that is not 
pretty much state of the art in, in terms of control, lighting control, right. uh, heat, HVAC control, it's all that kind of stuff. It's a, it's a big, yeah, you see stuff like that coming into New York? Is there any kind of a push for, for, for code? Um, you know? That I haven't seen too much of. I, I, I can't speak to that. I'm not sure okay. if it really is. I wasn't but sure what yeah, TSG's role been, was in, in that. I, I suspect that it's going to be coming our way eventually, yeah, but state? I haven't seen anything active right now. Isn't that by the state? It's by the state. Right. Yeah. 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 But to so, Greg's point, we, we have always lagged when it comes to yeah. energy yeah. costs yeah. compared That's to other areas right. in the country. Yeah, and I, I haven't seen anything active, like even contemplated or whatnot. I'm not saying there isn't, but I, I haven't been close to okay. it. So. Yeah. But, so, um, oh, I just wanted to put my last slide up here. I think it's just going to give me a sense, all right? And we, we can continue the discussion. I just well, let me, uh, want to give everybody a sense let me just, when I reach us, you know, too. Uh, please. Yeah. Okay. But this, this is just a sense for a couple of things. Obviously, there's our website, very important. It's an up-to-date website, has all the program information. A lot of what I talked about, it gives you the details behind it in terms of what the actual rebates are for a particular measure. So feel free to, you know, kind of uh, take a look at that at your leisure. It's uh, P-S-E-G-L-I-N-Y.com, and then you look under, you know, commercial and efficiency, and you'll see everything there between, it's, it's you know, Renewables, new buildings, existing buildings, it's all there. We even have a lead partner list if need be. And I also wanted to mention that every Friday, every Friday from 9 to 10, we have an open house in 15 Park Drive, Melville, where customers, contractors, advisors, whomever can come in and talk about a specific project or talk about any ideas for a project and say, hey, Will this qualify? What will it qualify for, etc.? So we'll be glad to review it right then and there. And that's that's every Friday open house, 9 a.m., 10 a.m. to 10 about in uh, in Melville. And uh, that's kind of that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, does that, Super. Does that make sense? Good. So, great. Okay. So,